Good morning. Right now it's 9 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock on a Monday. I'm thankful for another week. Thankful for another opportunity to hang out with you right here on social media. We're going to get it started and put it on the FM here in a couple minutes. I'm going to be hanging out with London, London Lawrence, learning about everything that's going on with the Helen Hall Library in League City. I, I also have learned a lot so far. and We haven't even gone on the air. I always, you know, just ask him questions before we go on. And he was like, well, you know, the library is part of the, the, the parks, parks, the park system. So it's a it's a really cool thing. We're going to be learning all about it. This is KHEA Radio 99.5 FM. We're going to be spreading some positivity this morning. Go ahead and smash the share button. If you are watching on Facebook, smash the share button, tag a friend. Let's get a watch party started and get some positivity spread today. I'm going to put us on the FM. Here we go. Good morning, this is KHEA Radio, 99.5 FM. It's 9 o'clock on a Monday. On a Monday. I think I'm getting used to the cold weather because my I look at my weather app and it says it's like 50-something degrees, but I don't feel like 50 degrees outside, but we're going to have some uh, uh, some fun this morning. My name is Gardy. This is Kickstart, and we are going to be talking to Mr. London Lawrence with the Helen Hall Library. London, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm great. How about you? I'm doing really good. good. Um, so today, uh-huh. we're going to be learning about everything going on within the Helen Hall Library System, specifically Leak City. Can you remind us, wh- how long have you been with, with well, Helen Hall? I've been with the city now for one year. It's been an amazing year of impact. We've done a lot in that year. Um, we're gearing up towards another year, and it's going to be great. It's going to be a good time, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Have you learned a lot in this one year that you've been yes. at the <laughs> library now? Yes. The first part is definitely getting to know the people, getting to know the area, getting to know more about the library and the resources, and then getting opportunities like this to kind of come out and empower the community. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right now, I think that there is some some I'm going to call it renovations. Right. The and and you mentioned before we went on the air what happened. So what right. happened? What's okay. going on with the library? So if you are a friend or a fan or a patron on the Facebook within the Helen Hall Library, you know I've been doing something called Live at the Library. And basically, what happened with the library is we had a crack in one of the pipes upstairs. So the bad part is it leaked into the downstairs portion of the library, and we had over 600 gallons of water pumped into the library. So Bad part is we had to close down, go through the construction phase. Great part is on January the 13th, we are reopening partial part of the library, and it will be open to the public. Okay, cool. Yeah. You don't think anybody went and cracked a pipe, do you? I would hope. Did you do that? No. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't me. I would me. hope nobody did that. I would hope not. My yeah. thought is, you know, you, everybody's like, man, you know, Leak City updated the park. You know, they updated yeah. this. How come the library's downstairs doesn't get the love, you know? It's getting a portion of the love. So we are getting new uh, renovations. Carpeting is being put in. We're extending some of the boardrooms, uh, some of the admin offices. So we are kind of getting a partial upgrade, which is good. But, you know, of course, we'd like more. But, you know, for the time being, you know, we're going to put that out there. <laughs> yeah, so nobody went up there with, like, a hammer. No, was I would like, hope, unless you did it and we don't it, know about it. It wasn't me. And in that case, you're spilling the beans. It wasn't so me. I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't me this time. This time, okay. But maybe next. But whatever it takes to get the job done. You know, sometimes you just have to do what you got to do, right? Right, right. But y'all are, but that's what y'all are doing. Y'all are taking that approach, like, hey, if you want to come in and uh, get some books, y'all are still accommodating. So the way that's working is with the curbside service. It's open uh, Monday through Friday. It's going to be from ten to six, and you have that opportunity to come out and browse some pre-selected uh, material, as well as if you have holes. So this is very important. If you guys have holes at the library, mm-hmm. you actually can come out and pick up those holes as long as you're notified. What does that mean? So holes basically say if you're online and you see some books, we're really pushing the nonfiction material because it's upstairs, and you have that opportunity oh. to. Uh, kind of place it and say, okay, I'm going to come and pick it up. Once you're notified, you can come and pick it up. So basically, it's kind of like the curbside assistance, I guess, at like yeah. these grocery stores. Mm-hmm. You select your books or your content, we pull it, and then we notify you, and you can come and get it. Yeah, that's yeah. that's ruined me. Like curbside, uh, it may, yeah. they deliver to my house. Yeah. You can pull up, and they're just going to bring it out to the car. You don't got to yeah. wait or even look for it. Do you think that's a good thing for people to experience at the library? Are they going to get used to it? I like, I don't know if they'll (laughs) get used to it, but it is, again, a service being offered at this particular time based on the circumstances. Um, I like curbside assistance. I used to go grocery shopping. Who doesn't like stuff being brought to them, right? Right. So the only thing we ask is that, again, you wait till you're notified, but you do have that opportunity to get some of your favorite books. Again, I'm a big biography reader. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm actually doing a program we'll talk about probably a little bit later okay. in April about Hollywood history, and we're going to pull some of those biographies. But, again, it's a great opportunity for you to still kind of check out books because, again, you may want to read to the itty-bitties. Uh, you still may want to check out a book for yourself. We're just asking for a little bit more time than normal just because everything's kind of scattered. Yeah. yeah, and then, you know, school projects and yeah. all kinds of uh, other resources that, that people use the library for. And also we have the e-library online. 
So you do have that opportunity to get some of those eBooks if they're available. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you access that? Is there a, an app or you have to have a library card and log in? So you can use your library card. You want to go to the Helen Hall Library uh, official website, go through the catalog, kind of go through the services tab, and then you'll find the tab to do so. How how did it go with, like, the like when did it go down? Like, when did everything close? December the 18th. I'll never forget the date. You know, somebody did do it on purpose. I'm thinking they're like, because <laughs> I was like, But it's like, so Christmas? close to Christmas, and it's crazy. New Year's. Literally the day we got the text message and then the messages <laughs> and the emails, everything kind of came through all at once. And so you go to work, and you don't know what to expect, right? So you walk through those doors, and you're like, what am I going to say? <laughs> and so we're lugging around. Like, literally, if you go to the Facebook and look at the live videos, because I've been documenting it mm -hmm. on live at the library, you'll see kind of the chaos that happened. Like, we were in sweat. <laughs> <laughs> we were in, like, Man. we were looking bad, but we were in there yeah. working. And a lot of the books didn't get damaged, believe it or not. It was more so carpeting and then also, you don't want to get any mold or anything like that. But it was maybe, like, maybe one or two materials damaged, but... It was. People were more so worried about like the portraits of like Helen Hall mm -hmm. um, and Susan, who was one of the librarians at Lee City Library for so long. People were worried about that. And Harry Potter under the stairs. People were like worried yeah, about Yeah, what Potter. happened to Harry, right? But he's it was good? okay. Yeah, he's great. He'll be back. He'll be back. Okay, good. You. Yeah. Harry's okay. He's okay. I was just thinking people, somebody... I don't know who it was. Maybe a good Samaritan said, you know what? They work too hard at Helen Hall. We they do. deserve <laughs> the Christmas extra right. extended vacation, uh, light duty, New right. Year's. Well, it wasn't necessarily an extended vacation. So what happened during that time? <laughs> we thought, but it wasn't. Just playing. Um, during that time, we kind of worked to protect the collection, relocate the collection, and then also figure out how we can better serve the public in that time. So it's a lot going on with that a few monumental amount of time. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, but it's did, more than what people thought. I definitely think so, yeah. Because yeah. I would have never known what goes into what happens when you have a crisis at the library. Like moving those books, we move books. Yeah, like you, hearts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is, is that something that you train for, or can you even no, train it's like for an it? In the moment type of thing, right? Like, it's like how do you do it? Um, you try to do it in collection. Great thing about the library is everything's kind of already organized. Mm -hmm. We just go from the shelf to the actual cart, and then we're lugging it around. Yeah, because our friends at the Moore Memorial Library. Yeah. They're doing a, a renovation. This one was planned. <laughs> this one imagine. was planned as far as <laughs> yeah, the, and uh, it's still it's still ongoing. Right. But they were talking about preserving the books. Right. Moving the books. Because you have to be careful. There's still they are still books. And yeah. Some are paperback. Some uh, the hard cover just depends on what the book is. But you have to preserve the book and do the best thing for the book. And then also you want to figure out how you can better serve your community while you're in this process. And again, this is right before Christmas. This is right before the New Year. So you have all those different components going into. What you got going on? Yeah, is Christmas generally a busy time? I know you've been there for for about a year, but the way I'm thinking is like, hey, kids are off school. You know, parents are probably saying, hey, you need to stay busy or keep your mind active. Is that normally it, a time where people? Yes, it's a lot going on because mm -hmm. we have the holiday open house, which is an annual thing they do at the library, and it's kind of it's accommodating with the tree lighting ceremony that we do in Lead City. So the tree is lit. Mm -hmm. um, you also have that cookie share thing going on in the library volunteer time it's a very busy time then we also hold the town hall meeting for the library for people to kind of get updated on the process with the library so christmas time in general is a very busy time again people are also traveling with staff so it's a variety of different things that go into the december or the holiday season okay yeah so can people volunteer i think on january 13th when y'all open yes. is that whenever people are gonna have the yes. opportunity to volunteer I again i encourage everybody to do so because we have we've been down and out <laughs> And I tell my people all the time, we talk uh, via email. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. excited about starting the volunteer program for the spring semester because, again, we operate on the fall, the spring, and the summer semester. So absolutely, I encourage everybody to go out there and figure out how you can get involved with the library. We're definitely going to need help putting those books back on the shelves, definitely working with uh, social media, definitely working with posting the videos and creating new content to let people know that we are back open on January the 13th. All right. Yeah. What day does that fall on? That's a Monday. It's That's a Monday. Monday. Is it next? Yeah, it's next Monday. Yeah. I'm still getting a grasp on, on what day it is. You know, there was a bunch of memes on social media right. saying that time between, like, Christmas and New Year's where you don't it's know. Wild. It's like Monday every day yeah, or, like, Friday. <laughs> you don't know what's going on. Everything yeah. feels like a Sunday. Yeah, it's it weird. Does. It definitely does, yeah. So today is Monday. Today is Monday. Just so everybody knows, yes. public service announcement. Yes. Today's Monday. And I, I think people are starting to get back in the swing of things. I also saw another meme, which is a, the way people communicate now. Yeah. Social it, media is a beast with the memes. It's it a lot is. going on. Yeah. Yeah. What did it say? It said, like, when you show up to work on a Monday and yeah. forget what in the world it is that you do. And yeah. it's just, like, pictures of people just, like, shocked. Like, I think what we've all had here? those moments. Yeah. 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 Is that what it's going to be like on Monday the 13th whenever it it's will. open to the public? <laughs> I'm going to hope not, okay? So we've still been working again. We've been doing curbside assistance. We have been doing inventory. I have been everywhere doing those live videos. So, again, it's kind of get back into the groove. It's a new year. It's a new opportunity. 
Um, so hopefully the public's going to love us like we love them. We're going to come back and keep moving like nothing ever happened. That's yeah. my goal. That's perfect. Yeah. Perfect. That's a good goal. It's 910 on a Monday. This is KHEARadio.com, 99.5 FM. If you're watching on Facebook, share this out. Let me know what you got going on today. We're going to be having some fun as we continue to talk about Helen Hall and everything that's going on. And we get down to the bottom of who cracked the pipe. And he says it wasn't him, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. It was not me that cracked the pipe. I hope not. And I hope, yeah, I don't know. I just yeah. think it's somebody thought they it's were going to get a very weird vacation. thing. Like when you come into work and like it's nobody there. We're used to people there all the time. Like yeah. it's me and maybe four or five other people initially, and then it grows. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been an interesting process. Yeah. yeah. But did you have, a, like personally, did you have a good Christmas, good New Year's? I had a great Christmas and a great New Year's. So I'm really big on the holidays, getting with my family, traveling, yeah. um, eating a lot of food. So that's my New Year's resolution. Probably like a lot of people is to kind of tone up and get back into the gym. Yeah. Is that yours? I don't know. You looked at me like, yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. always. I yeah. feel like that's like a year. It's always a thing. Just like, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to be in shape. Yeah. You're trying to be. Body and soul be the best you, right? Exactly. That's my goal for 2020. That's a good goal. Yeah, I think so. Because, you know, physicality <laughs> is only one portion of it, but you want to be mentally strong and you want everything to kind of come together. So I definitely think the new year is a new time to kind of reset. Yeah. Some people think it's kind of corny, but I do believe in New Year's resolutions and just kind of setting forth goals mm-hmm. for the next year. Or the next, de- it's a new decade too. So it it's is. a whole bunch of things that have changed. It is. I thought about that. So I'm like, you know, you got to move a little different. New year, new decade. And my wife asked me this. She said, do you remember people like in 2010? Because I've I've heard a lot too. And I was thinking about it. Like it is a new decade. But she asked, do you remember people in 2010 talking about a new decade? I don't. But I don't. Yeah. But it's something about that 2020. It's like 2020 vision. Like the the, uh, scope that we're using to measure the success for the next decade. I definitely think something about that 2020 is cool. Yeah. I think, you know, social media is bigger. Yeah. Uh, The internet is more entwined into all of our lives as well. So there's something that there's something different about this one. Right. Also, because you think about the 20s, like in the 1900s. Yes. And it's just like, 20s, oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is really happening. We're really going to do this. And you know what I think about? I always think about uh, Barbara Walters saying the 2020 thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of my little source for 2020. <laughs> but, yeah, a lot has changed within the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. And 2010, to me, does not seem that long ago. Um, but we're now in 2020. And so much has changed um, as far as. Our knowledge, what we have available, resources, uh, pop culture, social media, like you said, a lot's changed. Yeah. yeah. You know, how can the library, I guess, take take everything that they traditionally do, you know, books, uh, and, and keep it going into the future and kind of move along with the times and still stay, you know, relevant and, and necessary and, and stay The library here. will always be relevant <laughs> and it'll always be here. Um, not just in regard to books, but also in information as well as programming. Like I said, last time I was here, and I'm going to start coming more often. Because I haven't seen you at all this year. But, so, <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's good. But um, basically, the programming and the services that we offer to the patron, that's how we continue to change. Um, as the need in the community changes, we're supposed to be there to provide that information and help people find those resources. Um, definitely with programming. I'm a big programming guy. Things like the Live at the Library thing that we have online on social media allow people to kind of gauge what goes on behind the scenes of a library. Also, offering tours so that people can see what the process of a book's life is and going outside of books being available and open to suggestions from the public. So again, it's just a public space, even for maker spaces with technology offering recording studios. Uh, it's a free and limited access point, as I like to call it. And the where it starts or where it ends is basically up to the public. So mm-hmm. yeah, we're definitely going to be around forever. Awesome. Yeah, That's cool. That's cool. And, it, and I, I enjoy that y'all have uh, given access to people through smart devices, yeah. like you can log in and and I guess even check books availability or, or yeah. rent and read and yeah. I, um, the comfort of your own home. Yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Hey, we're gonna take a quick break on the FM. We're gonna keep it going on Facebook. This is KHEA Radio, ninety nine point five FM. It's nine fourteen. Cruise Planet. All right. Hey, Facebook. What's up? Facebook. I see y'all out there watching. Be y'all are playing the quiet game. What do you guys got going on today? Yes. What's up? Let us know. <clears throat> that should be good. All righty. That should be good. Um. So, what other what other resolutions do you have? Like for I guess for yourself, and maybe even in your career, like during yeah. this time at the library yeah. for so, t- 2020. Definitely refining the programs that we have. That's big for me. Last year was kind of my first initial year, so it was about establishing programs. This year is the year of refinement. Mm -hmm. That's good, the year of refinement, yeah, in multiple areas, and not just my professional life, but also my personal life. I definitely want to take more trips. I definitely want to read more books, of course. 
um, I want to watch more movies. I want to. I like Netflix, and I like their adaption <clears throat> of some of the books. So the show You is really popular right now. Is that based That's on a based book? on a book? It's based on a book. Well, I've seen. I saw that, and it said, ba- but they flashed it up there really quick. They do that, and it said. <laughs> Based on the something, something, and I was like, wait, this is based on a book? Yes. And then it's like gone, and I couldn't even have, have time to read Lucifer the Lucifer is based on a um, graphic novel, I want to say, and I like Lucifer a lot, the show. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of doing some research. And so I, I like to tell people this. A lot of people like Netflix, and people are like, what happens on you? Read the books. That's <laughs> the key point to get you to where you need to be. Um, it's not necessarily page by page the same, but it right. gives you kind of a premise. Like, I know... I'm going to talk about you off the book. But the second season kind of lets you into why he, Joe is the way that he is. If you haven't seen you, it's an incredible show. If you, have you seen you? I'm, I'm actually in like the, like on four, uh, season two, episode like four or so. Okay, so I can't yeah. tell you too much about it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do any spoilers. But you definitely can read the book. But for me, 2020 looks like refinement. It looks like uh, setting personal, more personal goals for myself. I said I was going to make a list of 20. I got to about 10. Because kind of all my goals are incumbent of, one specific thing, but just personal growth. Mm-hmm. What about you? For me, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make music this year. You want? Oh, you're a music man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I have uh, I have some goals for that. I wanted to make some um, new music because I haven't released anything in since 2015. Wow. Oh, it's been a while. So you're yeah. coming out of hiatus. Yes. Yeah. The people need me. No, yeah, nobody need needs me, but yeah. like I need me. Yeah. Um, it's funny and it, it's yeah. So that's that's a goal that I have. So. I'm 33 years old, and there's a song I wrote. I, I don't know. I wrote the song like in my in my 20s, and that's like one of the lines that says, you know, something about being 33 years old. And it was like a to me at least, I thought it was, it was a play on words for some other stuff. Yeah. And um, and I was like, man, I'm 33. Like this is as far as I planned. Yeah. Like in my head, when in my 20s, when I wrote that song, mm-hmm. it said something about 33 years yeah. old. I was like, I need to release something new. Yeah. I'm 30. I'm gonna be 34 this year. It's a full circle moment. Though, yeah. So to look at that. So I, I yeah I have plans and I've. I've already started on, uh, you know, getting with some friends, and yeah. I'm trying to release three projects. Wow. Three projects any this visual. year. I like visuals. Are you doing any visual components to any of those projects? So I, if I, I'm sure, but I haven't planned anything yet. Okay, okay. And um, but that's that's a goal that I have. Yeah. Also, uh, another one of my, I, I'll call it a resolution, a goal for this this season yeah. was I wanted to try and do a show by myself without having a guest. And I don't know if you've ever, maybe you have, and you'd probably be good at it, but just like talking. To yourself about nothing without having anybody to talk to or you have the best feed off of to yourself. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You do. It was yeah. hard. It was yeah. hard, and so uh, that that was a goal that I had. So I did it. Like the first show we did of the year, I was like, "What's up? I'm doing this by myself. Yeah. Here's what I want to talk about." And you and can because you're the such list. a good energy and you're such a good host at what you do. I think you definitely Thank you. do. It. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. So yeah, th- those were like my two main ones. I wanted I want to do some music, and then I wanted to get better. Uh, you know, talking. <laughs> I said I wanted to write a book, but then I was like, I can get somebody to write the book, and I can give them my perspective, and we can yeah. co-write it together. That's cool. I want to do a documentary, too, and submit to Sundance. I don't mm-hmm. know if you know about the whole thing, but I love Sundance and just the opportunity it gives to creatives in general um, to kind of show their vision of the world. And they have, like, all kind of different uh, platforms that you can yeah. use to submit your doc. Okay. So, yeah, just kind of. So, wait, write a book for Sundance? Or do they do that? No, or, like, I want to write, I wanna write a book at some point. <laughs> I said I would start it this year. More so, like giving them the ideas and kind of talking about it, and having somebody else write it. I'm really good at talking. I'm really good at what's an idea. I just don't see myself sitting down and actually writing the book. Okay, I don't see that. Yeah, but I also want to produce and kind of work on a documentary just to kind of talk about you know what I've done, which is really cool. And I don't think people think about it. like social media has so much of our life on it, right? Mm-hmm. So with Snapchat, you take little instant snaps of yourself. It's little clips. But since I think maybe 2016, I kind of recorded like my vacations and I yeah. took a lot of vacations some of the books and just like intimate moments like within my life with my family, kind of piecing that together and kind of doing something called Life in a Snap. Cool. And it's also a testament to like social media and also the new age and how we're constantly documenting our lives. Okay. So, yeah, just anything creative I think I'm definitely open to for 2020. And that branching off into the library and just kind of creating more opportunities <coughs> for the volunteers. So cool. anything we can do to kind of help and empower. So mm-hmm. so one thing that, that ministers do mm-hmm. as they, they speak a lot mm-hmm. They have people that go and transcribe their their sermons, their their speaking engagements, mm-hmm. um, based on like series. Like a lot of times, it'll be like a series. Hey, I'm gonna preach on this or whatever. Right. So they'll go back and, and transcribe it, and then they get editors to go through it yeah. and they piece it together uh, into almost like a book. Yeah. yeah, a book, and then you know it goes through revisions and they'll work together and collab on it. I think that's a great that's a great way to do it. You know, if you're good at speaking. Yeah. 
you know, hey, this is the topic I'm going to talk on. Yeah. I'm recording and then have somebody transcribe and you can get a book. If you were to write a book and you can get it started this year, I know you can do it. I know you're going to do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> what would it be on? It would just be on purpose because I think everybody's uh, the goal in life is to find your purpose and to live in your purpose. OK, so it was identifying your purpose and um, how small things can lead to the bigger scale of what your purpose is. And you have to be able to look at the small things as well as the big things to kind of understand and realize your purpose. So it definitely will be a book about identifying and living in your purpose. And yeah. I feel like if you do that, you never can go wrong. OK, because life is about a journey. We all have it. It may not be the same, but the end goal is whatever you choose it to be. Mm -hmm. As long as you follow and live in your purpose. Okay. Or at least that's been my experience. That's awesome. So, yeah. 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 Do you think, I mean, you can have a purpose in life, but there's so many different different things you can do and still fulfill that purpose, right? Right, right, right. right. There's no, I always tell people, look at somebody that you admire. Like, say if my goal is to be Oprah. Right. She's the blueprint for what you want to achieve. Now, granted, every single step that you take is not going to be the same as hers, but there's somebody that's done it, meaning that you can do it. It's nothing that somebody else on this world has done that you cannot do because we're all put here in that purpose. Now, how she identified her purpose, how she dealt with her purpose can be completely different from yours, but you still have the same opportunity, especially now with it being so open on different platforms like social media. Yeah. Yeah. So it's okay. just what you do as far as the planning process and your dedication and your drive and your work ethic to get there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was listening to a podcast the other day and um, and they were talking about, you know, like purpose and having having it and and just, you know, it's a combination of, a, I mean, things falling into place. Right. They call it like, oh, you're lucky. You're an overnight success. You know, right. Pastor Hallam here at Abundant Life talks about that. It's like, yeah. no, nah. it's not. It takes work. Yeah. You think, you know, that overnight success, what you see whenever something breaks yeah. was a lot of, yeah. of planning, you know, research, just like hitting the pavement and then, you know. Yeah. You get lucky, like you know, a, like oh, you I'm have so like lucky. a Lizzo moment or an Adele moment where you work for so long underground <clears> and then you kind of break into mainstream and then people think it's instantaneous success. But the work and the amount of hours and the time that people have to put on the side for that one moment of overnight success, it takes yeah. months, it takes years, sometimes it takes a lifetime. Cool. Um, That's true. Yeah. yeah. So, OK, I have to ask you about the movie. OK. If if and when the movie gets made, okay. what is the topic? Is it going to be based on the on the purpose book? Yeah, I think everything with me kind of goes together. It's more so like a lifestyle brand of just being your best you and mm -hmm. how do you fulfill your life's journey and how does everything kind of come together collectively to make a better you. Okay. So I think that's what everything would be for me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I feel like, I don't know if Galveston has one. I think they do have one. Do they have like a film? I think they have like a little film festival. I don't know. I should look into that. I'm not going to lie. I have not looked into it, but I definitely will. Yeah. Now that now that you mentioned it, I was going to say they should have one. I think they do because there's a gentleman, you know, from Lamarck, mm -hmm. and he came out with a movie, and he came out with a, a second movie. It just dropped. Mm -hmm. And um, I've, I've, I see he actually dropped, he released it on YouTube after he had his premiere and everything. Yeah. So it's really cool. It's a really cool thing, but I know he won some uh, awards for the first one. I think at that that Galveston Festival. I'm gonna have to look. Cool, yeah. man, and I can't remember the name of it right now. Let me know if you remember. Definitely, look I will. I, I could look through my friends list and be like, oh, there it is. I'm I'm a fool, you know. <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, uh, we got one more song we can play. We can go back on the FM. It's 9:23, hanging out, talking to London, talking about London, about uh, everything going on at Helen Hall. Yes. Everything's taking place in League City, and how we can. Be the best version of ourself. I like that. That's a good tie. Into a new decade. Yes. The new the new decade is is upon us. It is. It's here. <laughs> it's actually here. Yeah. So it's there's a lot that you can do, and uh, we like to try and spread you know positivity and here at KHEA Radio. So that's what we're doing today, and that's what we're gonna do every day. Hey, hey. That's the plan. That is the plan. January 13th, the library is gonna be opening again. If you want that curbside service you can access that how do you get uh how do you get access to that so you can actually come to the library again it'll be open from 10 to 6 this week and next week we're going to go back to regular hours so i don't think after next week we won't be offering curbside assistance so this is the last time for you guys to get that curbside assistance um definitely place those holes as soon as you're notified you definitely can come up to the library and pick up those holes okay yeah so again from 10 to 6 as long as you're notified you definitely can come up to the library pick up those holes if you're not notified and you just want to pick up a book for the kids or yourself Definitely come and browse some of the options. Again, <clears throat> we are pushing some of the nonfiction books. So if you're a big biography reader like myself, definitely place those books on hold and learn about some of your favorite celebs. Yeah. yeah. Do you think people are going to be upset whenever the curbside's gone? Maybe some people got used it to it. It would be somebody that would be used to it, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but the great thing is you're going to have a better and bigger selection to browse. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
All right, here we can go back on the FM right now. Here we go. Good morning. This is KHEA Radio, 99.5 FM. Right now it is 925 on a Monday morning. Talking to Mr. London Lawrence with uh, League City's Helen Hall yes. Library. Uh-huh. Uh, where's Helen Hall located? So it's located on 100 West Walker Street in League City. Mm-hmm. You know, everything right there is kind of put together like official League City. It definitely is. Like it, We call it the lot. <laughs> like back in the day with all the studios in Hollywood. Yeah. It's the lot and it has all the different de- police departments over there, uh, city council. Everything sits on those lots of property. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's very... I mean, I don't know if they thought about it all, you know, in the beginning, but it is centralized. You can get to like, oh, your old League City, your, you know, access to I-45, Highway 3, if you want to try and skip some traffic. That's what I do. I always say go Highway 3. I cut around too. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm like going to the movies or Cinemark, I'm like, I'm taking Highway 3. I'm no fool. Go around. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get caught. (laughs) So it's all, it's all right there. The other day I had a a meeting before the, the League City holiday in the park, the parade. I was in the parade. How did it go? It was fun. Yeah, did you get to see all the floats? And so everything? I didn't. I left before. I was a dancing snowman. Like, yeah. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. We came in second place, first in the city. So yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. What so what was the theme of, of it y'all's? was Frosty turns fifth year. Frosty's fifth yeah. year. Yeah. So the theme was Frosty. I was a dancing snowman. We had a whole routine. Um, we had a DJ, uh, DJ Hocus Pocus, which is Sarah, who's over communications. Her husband was in there in the turntable in the hat. He was dressed as a rat. Oh, yeah. So you missed all the festive fun. Yeah. Man, yeah, it was fun. people take that parade very seriously. Yeah. I didn't know how serious until I got in there, and it was like passing out the candy, remembering the dance steps. It was a whole routine. Was this your first It was my experience? First. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, uh-huh. Yeah, this is something that has been going on for a while. Uh, yeah. So we had um we do some stuff with I-45 now, and... um. So TJ had asked if we could k- kind of help work with them to help broadcast that yeah. um, onto like I social media the, platforms. Yeah, I saw the broadcast, uh-huh. So that's what we did. We used some of our equipment and, and some of our people <clears throat> out there. Yeah. So I was out there beforehand, but then what was it I had to do? Like I was out doing something. Like, yeah, I think, I, oh, I know what it was. I had to go to the Rockets game. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Big guy on campus, so, right? <laughs> so I was like, oh, man, I'm, I'm already having, uh, I already have that, you know, schedule, yeah. the tickets and everything. And so yeah. I was like, I'm going to take out. Uh, and so I walked because you can't just. The streets are blocked off and I you, had no idea. How, yeah. Yeah. Like getting in there was like with the president of the Secret Service, like getting in and getting out. And yeah. Like, and I caught by traffic and then I lived like on uh, South Shore. So I was trying to get around. It was crazy. Yeah, I yeah. had to walk. I probably walked like a mile and a half, but I had Ubered there yeah. knowing that I would Uber out. Yeah. And it was a pain because the Uber, like I see him going like, well, he's blocked. He's blocked. I was like, I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to yeah. keep walking. And then it was like, you walked too far out of your circle. Yeah. So I had to walk, walk backwards. Back the yeah. And then I, I got back in there and he picked me up and he was trying to go into block traffic. I was like, nah, dude, no, we got to turn <laughs> no, around. No, no. We got to go this way. Yeah. So he was... Yeah, he was cool, but it was very. Hectic. I made it, yeah. Uh, but it, people get very into holiday in the park. So the great thing about League City, I always tell people, is it we've expanded so much, but it still has that small town feel to it, and I mm-hmm. think we pride ourselves on. And it's a great opportunity to kind of see that at the parade because there's so many people. Like all the streets are paved with people. The floats are amazing. You see everybody from the mayor to the library staff. Um, to some churches and organizations. Like everything's amazing. Everybody comes together for that parade. Yeah, who who wins? It's a church, and I can't remember. It's City Mark. Yes, City Mark. Yeah, there's they a church win. in Lake City. Every year, which is good. What they them. do this year? They did the TV. <laughs> they did Frosty and Winnie. And was it like black TV. and white? No, I think it was a. Um, <clears throat> it was like a box, like an old school TV, like the knob turning. TV. Yeah, yeah, they did that. That's cool. And we did like a scene from the movie where they're in the greenhouse and they're melting. Yeah, they beat us, which is good for them. <laughs> who who votes? Um, I want to say we have judges, and I don't know where the judges come from. Is it rigged? It's not rigged. It better not be. I'm just like every year, <laughs> like every year they're going to beat no, us. No, like, we're going to have positivity. It's not rigged. Really. <laughs> it's not really. Okay. They just do a really great job every year. And shout out to them for putting their efforts into that. But we won first for city's department, so that's good. Okay. Yeah. But second overall? Yeah, second overall. You don't have to put that in there. Second <laughs> overall, but first with the city. So. <clears throat> well, no, that's still pretty good. That's, that's bragging right. Because there's a lot of people who enter. Yeah, they are. They are. So yeah. We always come in that top, which is not number one. Yeah. But number two is okay. Number two is okay. Num- first, first for the city of Lake City. Department. <laughs> yeah. It is, but you know. Enjoy it. Have have y'all already, already started planning out next year's? No, they have not, and I can't let you know when we do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want them to be listening and take our ideas. So yeah, I won't be the guy to give that up. All right. So, um, the city of League City, they do a lot of, of fun stuff like that, and it does have that small town feel. Yeah. 
but still being 100,000 plus. Uh -huh. I know this year there's a census mm -hmm. that's going to be taking place, and I'm really curious. Do you have any guess? Like, what do you think the city of Leak City is going to be sitting at population-wise? No I have no idea. But I know that it is expanding, um, and that means we need a bigger library. A better library. I got to pull yeah. it back together. And just to give everybody the opportunity to kind of come out and gauge what the library is. And I mean, the more space that we have available, um, the more space we have that opportunity to make an impact on both sides of Leak City. Because, I mean, it's I think the west side, I want to say, is a side that's expanding. So it would be really great to give them additional resources. Yeah, because y'all are on the, the east side over there. So right. you can kind of get there. Yeah. The west side's expanding. It, it's just, yeah. there's a it's lot. A lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, in a perfect world, a, just a new location? Or mm -hmm. wh what are you thinking? A perfect world would be a new location, better parking, and just more. More space, yeah. That would be the perfect ideal. Just so we can have more programming, uh, better books, newer books, and a bigger collection for everybody to browse through. And also provide like things like the tech labs. And mm -hmm. all the different innovation spaces as well as study sp spaces. Yeah. What what happens in the tech labs? What happens in the tech labs? Yeah. So it can be a variety of different things. You can have a recording studio, kind of something like this set up. People can have the free opportunity to come out, reserve that room, and record demos for like music if you're interested wow. in music. Uh, audio books if you have a book you want to record. You know, the music or even guitars. It's a variety of different things that can go into those tech spaces. So I always say tech spaces because, again, we're in 2020. So with 2020 vision, we're going more of an innovation space type of era. So. Is there some of the, the tech, like, provided in there? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you go to Austin Public Library, which I have. Do you go to Austin? I'm, I haven't been to the library there. Go to it. Okay. So I love Austin Public Library. I love Austin in general. I want to move there. but Don't do it. Don't leave I, us here. I, 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 I we know, need I you. Know, I know. I know. I'm here for you guys. <laughs> But the great thing about Austin is they modeled their library after, I want to say, a, a Japanese library or something mm -hmm. like that. But they have a lot of amazing maker spaces and innovation labs where you can actually rent out their equipment from everything from video cameras uh, to guitars wow. to mics. So, yeah, that's where the space is. But Austin has an amazing library. I definitely tell people to go out there and check it out so you can kind of get a bigger glance for what the library is. They even have a cafe in there. It's like a shopping mall. I think it's three or four stories high. Yeah. It's amazing with the parking garage. They charge you for parking after the first hour, so make sure you go in and out <laughs> just to kind of view it. That's where they get you with the recording. That's where they get you. <laughs> they get you. But it's an amazing <laughs> opportunity to see what a library could be. Yeah. In Texas City, they're actually doing renovations on their library, too. They and are. I've seen kind of some of the pictures of it, and I can't wait to go and check that out. Yeah, they were, you know, re resetting it up in a different way so you can – rent out spaces to hold like teleconferences or if you have a job interview a lot of the times you have to skype right and the way they had it before you can use you know the internet and computers or your laptop but they didn't really have a space so i thought that was really cool mm -hmm. because that's the way people you know communicate now or if you have a job i mean you can you can i could work for a job yeah. a place in new york yeah. you know and i never have to go yeah that's true so you know you just have to communicate and so that was i thought that was cool it you know cool. it's yeah. bringing it to the the um you know, 2020. It's cooler <laughs> when it's free. So it's exactly. provided as a resource for free, and you can rent that out for free. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I know they were bringing in a cafe area, yeah. which is mind-blowing, because I know the role is like, you need to keep it down, and there's so no way you're bringing okay, food in here. Okay, but that's the stereotypical rule. <laughs> so actually, <laughs> I always tell people we're not your mom's library, so you actually can't bring food as long as you're respectful with the food. You can talk, because again, you have to realize you work with teens, you work with kids, you work with adults, and sometimes we're just not quiet people. So... Everybody needs to get away from the stigma of everything's like, shh, nobody's going to tell you that. Yeah. You definitely can eat. You definitely can bring a snack. Of course, if you're having water or a drink, you want to be cautious when it's with the computers. But those are all things that are kind of common sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Books, too. I, I mean, yeah. And you want to be protective of the books, too, because other people have to use these books. And the great thing is sometimes, I know as a high school student, when we had to read those books, uh, like The Scarlet Letter or Fahrenheit 451, not everybody could afford those books. So you come to the library and you check those books out, and then you have to realize, just like you had to do in your ninth grade year, the next following eighth grader that's turning a ninth grader will have the same opportunity. And it's a free resource and a free book, and it's going to save you so much money. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So we were talking about that Austin library. Uh -huh. Are they kind of, I guess they stretch the idea of what a library is? They did an amazing job. It looks over at Lady Bird Lake, mm -hmm. and it's amazing. They have a, uh, what is it, a, not a botanical garden. They have some kind of garden system there. They have an outdoor uh, patio for events. It's just an amazing space. So All you right. have to check it out. Definitely cool. look online. If you're in Austin, check it out. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So do you think that, you know, the lot, mm -hmm. if y'all need expansion, mm -hmm. is it best just to kick, like, City Hall out or, like, <laughs> like somebody else the out? <laughs> <laughs> just kick them out, right? New decade, new us. No, it's like, we need um, the space. You know, maybe y'all can upgrade. Sometimes it's best 
there's a different approach. You know, I, it's like, hey, we can get space, but y'all deserve a new, a new building, you know? Yeah, I think the best approach, in my personal opinion, would be a new space. Because what you, what you have to realize is that the library is old, and we do what we can with the space. But again, this is a building that is from the uh, 1970s. Um, there's been several great renovations made by the city. But again, you know, with you kind of patching up things, you have that problem of continuing to patch, but it's still the same old building. Mm-hmm. So the ideal situation would be to get a new space. Um, and definitely we are working with the city to make that happen. And we are, you know, taking. But we need, in order to make that happen, we just want everybody to be, you know, knowledgeable of the situation and us trying. Again, this is a great, um, with the, I don't want to call it the great flood of 2019. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But with the crack situation, this is kind of just letting people know that, you know, we have to do more to preserve our library. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so whenever I was going to that meeting, whenever uh, TJ had, had asked us if we could, you know, use some equipment for I-45 Now to help broadcast that that parade, mm-hmm. I guess it's City Hall, but we went, there's the front, there's like a window where there's some people, I guess, answering questions. There's an elevator. I was like, y'all have an elevator mm-hmm. yeah. in here? Yeah. So we rode the elevator up. Somebody had to come down and get us, like, yeah. we think, you know, with the credentials and Everywhere stuff. you go. Man, I no, know. No, I'm not used you. to that. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we went up and I was like, oh, there's, you know, Mayor Pat Hallisey's office, yeah. city manager, all these cubicles and these windows right. and stuff. And then we went to this conference room, like way wrapped around. Right. And in my mind, I was thinking, like, just look at all the books they could fit in here. Yeah. They just got to move the people out. Yeah. And then, no, I'm just kidding. I wasn't thinking that. Yeah, but, yeah, I was, yeah. but it was kind of like surreal. I was like, man, this is nice because I've been, in, you know. I got to give you a tour. You got to come up to the library and I got to mm-hmm. give you a tour to kind of show you what we have and what would be great to have. Yeah, I think that'll be a great idea for you to kind of see, especially with programming too. Being big on programming, moving into the new decade, that's kind of where the future is. I definitely yeah. foresee that because it's one thing to provide somebody with a tool, but then also give them the knowledge to expand upon the tool and see the best way to use the tool. So the book is the tool essentially, um, but then also the resources that go with it. So if you want to start a business, finding in the library a which me and Miss Joanne, who's the adult services librarian, talked about this, having a program where we introduce the patron to a book. Say if you're interested in a business and then partner you with a community partner and go about establishing the business and kind of market the process and use the tools available to you at the library for free. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that's the that's part of the programming that y'all want to develop. Yeah. And we have some great programs coming up, especially for the spring. We're doing something called inclusive programming and it's going to be on select Fridays. And I'm running that with a volunteer. And it's going to be for those with special needs or disabilities. Uh, it's going to be from 5 to 6 on select Fridays. And I can't remember the dates because a lot's been going on. So I'm not going to do yeah. well with dates for this particular session. But this information is definitely available via the website um, for the city as well as the library. But inclusive program is going to be once a month. And it's different activities for that specific group because we want to be incumbent of everybody. Okay. Mm-hmm. What is the website? So the website is going to be www.leaguecitytx.gov slash Helen Hall. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I had to think about it. You know, I I Googled I th- Helen Hall Library. Uh-huh. And you can just Google this, too. Just Google Helen Hall Library and League City, and it will come up. All right. And so then you'll be able to, yeah. to check out every everything. And that, it should have all the dates yeah, of upcoming events. Yeah, the events have all the dates on there. If you have a specific question in regards to volunteer services, you can go to that e-services tab and then go to volunteer. And then it's my page <clears> with my <throat> personal information. You can call me, and you also can email me. So, And that's the same for any department head at the library. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. You know, we talked about your, I guess, your past, like growing up. What did you want to mm-hmm. be last time that you came in? Mm-hmm. And now we kind of talked about like purpose and fulfilling mm-hmm. the purpose and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we also talked about today, like the different way you can fulfill the same purpose, uh-huh. what you're supposed to do multiple different ways. Right. Is that what you're doing right now? Yeah. 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 So I feel like um, that's why I tell people I love my job because I'm able to contribute to so many different facets so if you think about it we're working with like inclusive programming we're working with the seniors with the senior book buddies program which i don't know if i talked about that last time and if not i'll just talk about it briefly um basically with the senior book buddies program it's a once a month program that operates on the last tuesday and thursday of the month mm-hmm. we basically go out to select senior sites and provide them with content that's selected specifically for them at the library when you say select senior sites like uh, what where are we so talking about? we're doing the uh, Dickinson area, we're doing Texas City, we're doing Webster, any place within our little area that we can go out and reach the senior citizens, yeah. Is it at, like, care centers or, like, uh, select locations where people will meet? Every site is different. We have some that are, like, care centers. We have some that are um, assisted living. We have some where the seniors are just, you know, youthful and doing the thing. So it just depends on the site. But basically what happens is we, uh, which we're actually starting the process in January this month of kind of picking new sites. We call up, set up a meeting. Uh, we're doing something called lingo because we can't say bingo. And we're going out. Yeah, no, Why? It's a technicality. It's, it's a technicality. It's <laughs> bingo, so we have to say lingo. <clears throat> Fun fact about working at the library. 
But um, you go out to the senior site and basically have a meeting with them. We'll play a game with them, kind of introduce our program and let them know how we select the books because people always want to know, how do you know what I like? Well, right. we do something called Reader's Advisory. So it's basically like a check sheet. And you tell us what you like in a book, what you don't like in a book, your favorite authors, your favorite settings, your favorite periods. And then we take all that together. One of the volunteers, Claudia Smith, who does a wonderful job and has been with me since I started volunteer, volunteer work at the library. She selects the books, and then each month we give them one to two pieces of content at the library. Mm-hmm. We also work with the kids with the YMCA outreach event. So every month on a Monday and a Friday, we go out to the Perry Center YMCA, who's another one of our wonderful partners, and we read to the kids for about an hour. So it's a variety of different projects that we do at the library. All kind of It all started off as an idea in my brain, um, and with the help of the volunteers as well as the library and the staff, I've been able to kind of cultivate each idea. How old are the kids at the at the Perry Family they YMCA? Range. So we have kids that are like two all the way to about 13. So mm-hmm. it just varies. Uh-huh. How do you all pick a book that hopefully will reach in that groups. range? So we're there for an hour, but you have to think about the book. So it may take maybe 10 minutes, depending if we're doing a song or an activity with the kids. Mm-hmm. But we have um, children's librarians as well as volunteers kind of work together and select those books and the songs. Okay, cool. Yeah. So the other thing I wanted to bring up, it's not mm-hmm. really a question, okay. but you mentioned how you all have to play lingo instead of bingo. Uh-huh. I don't know if this is true or not, but you know how restaurants, they always have like their happy birthday song and it's not happy birthday? That's true. You have to pay for it after a certain amount of time. Did you know that? Well, that's what I always yeah, heard. You have, you have to pay for it after a certain amount of time. It's the same thing with like uh, television. Yeah. You have to pay for it after a certain amount. It's trademarked. I feel, <laughs> like, I feel like it should be public domain about now. think, but I mean, somebody's smart enough to get it every time. <clears throat> so after you've seen those first few bars, you're going to be paying for it. So, yeah. yeah. There are technicalities when working with things like that. So that's what I was was wondering, Mm -hmm. like lingo, like somebody's like, hey, now if you're going to say bingo. They have something with bingo, yeah. You got to pay for it. Yeah. 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 It has Native American (coughs) roots. Okay. Yeah, that's what Wow. Uh I learned that working at the library. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to come in and learn about like copyright or like even, um, like why can't I say happy birthday? Some of this stuff I took a class on in college and Mm -hmm. it was called media law because I was going to do PR at a point. Yeah. So we learned about that too. So I kind of had a little previous knowledge on it. But yeah, you definitely can come to the library and find books about things that are trademarked. A lot of things you would think are going to be like public domain by now, they're not. Yeah. So and sometimes you find like tricky. I was reading a few years ago that somebody got the, it was some word, the McFlurry or something, and went out of a <laughs> copyright and somebody bought the word before McDonald's could get the word. And so they had to buy back the rights from the person. So you, if you could catch a tricky little thing like that, you definitely can. You do can you think that's money. smart or do you think that's sleazy? It's very sleazy, but it's also smart. <laughs> <laughs> it's smart and sleazy at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, McDon- McDonald's, you know, I love McDonald's. Like, yeah. you, I feel like I mean, they should know bil- better. It's a billion dollar corporation. So yes. somebody dropped the ball on that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the happy birthday thing, it's like just other people sing happy yeah. birthday. They always switch it up and, you know. Happy, happy birthday. That's like, yeah, cool. yeah, that's yeah. what you have to do, the clap. Yeah. Yeah. So what was your major in college? So my major, I majored in anthropology as well as communication. What's anthropology? Uh, I know there's a store. Yeah. My wife likes it. Yeah. So anthropology is a study of people and culture, basically. So cool. So it's a more specific form of communication. So why we act and react to certain situations. It's kind of closely related to sociology. Sociology is the group, whereas the, uh, no, I'm sorry. Sociology is the individual, whereas to um, anthropology is the collective group. Okay. Yeah. What is it that made you research that? Mm-hmm. Like, say, like, you know what? Okay, I want to do PR, you uh-huh. know, communication stuff. And then you're like, hey, anthropology actually looks like it'd be, you know, a better fit at this time. I'm a people person and I like to travel. And so when I travel, like, of course, you get the opportunity as an American. I always tell people to kind of travel to different countries and things like that. But also submerging yourself within the culture. And I found myself like, yeah, I like to talk. But then also seeing, like, why you react to certain situations or why do a specific group of people act a certain kind of way based on a variety of different variables. So I always find myself interested in the individual as well as the connection because I feel like in order to be a great communicator, you kind of have to connect with people and understand or meet them where they are. Mm-hmm. So that's what kind of drew me to the field of anthropology. Cool. Which a lot of people are like, what? They think archaeology and anthropology are the same thing. It sounds similar. You don't hear, it does because yeah. you don't hear the word anthropology <clears throat> often, but that's what it is. It is a store though, right? Yeah, it is a store. Yeah, you are right. See, for me, I'd be like, I wonder what that means. Yeah, <laughs> and then I'd research and be like, I yes, think I want to. Yes. And they have kind of an earthy that. tone to it. Too. They do, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it is. It's a cool place. Hey, this yeah. is a comment from Jessica Matos, okay. who had commented earlier and said, "Hey, thanks for the shout out, London." But she said, "Just recently, Happy Birthday was put into public domain, at least in the United States." And I, I reacted with the shock. Ah. And hopefully this is true. We'll have to do some more research. Okay. But then I'm going to go around telling restaurants everywhere. Yeah. Okay, this is a great thing. My so 2020. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, know you know, hopefully this is true. If, if This is like big news. Thank you for sharing that, too. That's great information to know. Yeah, it's like a hundred years or something yeah, like it's old. copyright. It's old. You know, uh, I feel like it's a long time. It does. It lasts a long time. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember reading something about like some of the Disney characters are going to be going into public domain at some point too. soon. Yeah. They had a big debate over Mickey Mouse. Which I don't think he should go into public domain. I love Mickey Mouse. He shouldn't go into, but that's somebody's. Cre- I mean, and then you think about public domain and also creative properties. And as a creative, you think about you know your work being open to everybody. Somebody yeah. worked very hard because Mickey Mouse was not the first person that Walter or character that Walter Disney created. Mm-hmm. There was a duck I want or a rat, it was a duck or a rat before Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse was not the first. Yeah, somebody stole his original work. He wrote for like a, um, this is a true story too. He wrote for like a um, publication and they were doing shorts. And so he wanted to take his character with him and they told him no. So that's when Mickey Mouse was created. I want to say it was a duck. Wow. Yeah. And so that's how Mickey Mouse kind of became his signature character. But it was somebody else before. It might have been a rabbit. I want to say it was a rabbit actually. Yeah. Yeah. So he couldn't take it. He couldn't take the rabbit. So he created the mouse. And here we are today. And here we are today. Yeah. So hopefully they can keep it. Wow. Let's see. Right now it's 9.45. This is KHEARadio.com, 99.5 FM, talking to London Lawrence with the Helen Hall Library yes. in League City, yes. learning about everything that's going on this year. It's 2020, and the library is going to be reopening January 13th. January 13th. There were some renovations. Yes, we have some renovations. Due totally to planned. Day. Yeah. <laughs> By him. <laughs> By him, you know, he, he flooded us out, but we are going to be open January the 13th. It's going to go back next week to normal business hours. Again, this uh, week we're operating on the 10 to 6 schedule, curbside assistance. And I always tell people, make sure you're notified before you come up there. Yeah. Turnaround time is not as smooth um, as we'd like it to be just because books are everywhere. And if you want to see kind of what I'm talking about, go to the Helen Hall Library Facebook page. You can look at Live at the Library and kind of see the tour of the process. And actually, probably when I leave here today, I'm going to record a live session. So Cool. Yeah. Is there anything else that, that you wanted to touch on that we haven't talked about yet? Yes, a few things. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I want to give a shout out to the teen librarian, Sheldon Stevens. She has a wonderful program. It's called the Teen Book Box. So I know we live in this time where we like everything to be selected for us. And again, working with reader advisories, you can register your teens. And what she does every month is, and I'm actually wearing the button here, she creates a book, a goodie, a goodie book bag mm-hmm. or bag. I don't know. What is it? A box. It's a goodie box. And inside it has um, a book. It has a, a snack and also has like a toy or a little, it switches like different prizes inside of the box. And it's a book selected specifically for the teen based on what they like. And then that's we also, cool. Yeah, we also have story time coming back on January the 13th for the kids. And of course, that's two sessions. You have that 1015 to 1045 and then the 11 to the 1115, 1130 area. So also with the library being reopened, some of the spaces are going to change. Um, of course, you also can check out the Beyond the Oaks book which is an amazing reference point for everything going on at the library, even with the inclusive tutoring, because, again, we have inclusive programming. We also have the tutoring that is free. We're looking for tutors if you're interested, and if you want to have your child tutored, that is open to the public. So they would be able to be tutored in, in whatever subject, like, yeah. hey, they need help in, in math. Yeah, K through 12. They changed it. Yeah, K through 12, it's open, and it is free. <coughs> so it's a great resource. Why do you think they changed math? What do you mean? <laughs> they, ch- they changed it. Like what do you I mean they changed it. Did it get they harder? They changed it. Yes, it's harder. Like my son is seven years old, yeah. and he's in the second grade. Yeah. And instead of just like, hey, vertical, like, oh yeah, yeah just add them up. I was using my fingers. I yeah. still use my fingers. Yeah. Like when it, it, I'm yeah. tipping, like yeah. at, at a restaurant, I'm just yeah. like, they're the, they okay. Do a math called everyday math or basic math, where it's basically the principle. Well, but I can't say that because some people are engineers and you need math. <laughs> yeah. But I think it should be my <laughs> ideal school would be. You start off very early, kind of like grooming you to be whatever you want to be. Yeah. If you want to go into a math-driven career, have a math-driven you know, curriculum. If you're going into a more liberal arts kind of creative type of thing, have that option available. I, for math, was never for me a strong point, except for money. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, once we got to, like, trigonometry and everything like that, I was like, yeah. let me just go back to the fingers. And now, exactly. in my everyday life, I use math for budgeting, um, for bills, like a lot of people, and that's it. Yeah. But it's not true for everybody. But math, I yeah, I've helped my godson with some homework, too. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I Wolfram co- Alpha is a good resource, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, that's a great resource. It helped me with college. Yeah. Me, too. <laughs> <laughs> I know about it. Yeah. <clears throat> Man, if you t- yeah, it's crazy. I'm not going to give away too many of, of my secrets, yeah. how I got through college. How he and flooded all, out the library, know. right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copyright math, and there I'm going to make it easy. There you go. And it's going to be uniform, and I'm going to say, you know that ma- that new math they're teaching? Because who took it's time? out the door. 
Like who took you know to sit down and think about the Pythagorean theorem and pi. <laughs> if you haven't heard that word in a long time, right? And to think like who took the time to think about this? I mean, I'm grateful for you because you know circumference and you know diameter, all these words that I haven't used in forever. I'm thinking about them now. But it, it math is interesting. Um, my my wife is watching on this stream and she put in quotes. They changed it. LOL. Yeah, like, they did yeah. change it. They made it a little harder. They expect a little bit more. Man, I'm happy that I graduated when I did. I'll tell you that. <laughs> what year did you graduate? I graduated in 2012. Yeah. 2012. 2012, yeah. That was a good year. It was a great Wasn't year. Wasn't the, the world supposed to end it that was year? A, it didn't end. We just took over. That was the shirt. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that a good one? Yeah, yeah. It didn't end. We just took over. The class yeah. slogan. That was the class slogan. Man, yeah. that's you awesome. You remember those? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Our song was, um, what's the group with Adam Levine? Was Maroon, Maroon 5? 5. Payphone was our song. <laughs> and it's, so, oh, it's such a perfect song. We had, like, an amazing year. Yeah. His voice. Yeah. Like, I'm just thinking, like, yeah. Hey, man. Yeah, it's like, amazing. Like, yeah. I love it's so one. high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was our song. He's on The thing. Voice. Or is he's he still on, on The Voice? Yeah. Is The Voice still yeah. on TV? Well, you know, they switched through judges. I don't know yeah. if they're currently, but yeah, he's good. Yeah. That's some good stuff, man. Yeah. I've been on, my wife like, why are you watching that? Like on an American Idol kick? Yeah. You know, like based on, on what you watch on Facebook, yeah. like you watch one video. And it, it's going to pop everything. It like populates. you go to your watch. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, I don't know. I just ended up on a rabbit trail. And yeah. now it just thinks I want to watch American Idol auditions. But they're entertaining. The Mass Singer is pretty good, too. I like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. American Idol used to be a bit. That's another thing to that little testament of the new decade. At the beginning of the decade, you know, American Idol still was holding on. I remember it being such a big deal for it to come on. Mm -hmm. We would have, like, popcorn, like, pizza. And it was a big deal because it was a new format being developed. But yeah. now it's like there's so many different songs, so many different options, so many different shows. I think they took it They took it away. Yeah. And they probably needed back. some time. And then they yeah. they bring it back. Different judges. The voice is better, though. The voice like is good. they have good. more current judges. Because, I mean, Paula Abdul, you know. you know, Yeah. No offense to Paula's people, but she wasn't really current at that moment yeah the 80s, so. i think right now it's like lionel well, at least on the american idol like auditions that yeah. i'm watching lionel it's Richie. lionel richie uh -huh. Katy perry mm -hmm. and luke bryan yeah i which think luke, yeah and which are all good people yeah he's a legend and then it's a good Katy mix perry, who's good and then yeah of course does great work yeah. yeah well yeah people commenting saying hey i can't stand the auditions i like the, do you got do you remember the um the guy who was well so many people sung horribly but it was one guy who went viral i can't remember the asian like, guy we, yes 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 was it did, did william he houston he sung Whitney Houston or something. It was hilarious. Is it William Hung? Is that his name? That's his name. And you remember, see, he's an icon. <laughs> yeah, he got a career. Yeah, he did. Yeah, but it, it is sad at some point whenever you watch people and, you know, they're trying their hardest and they're yeah. genuine and sincere and they're yeah. not faking it. And it's just, hey, you know, you don't have what it takes. And everybody doesn't. Like, just because you sing in the shower doesn't mean that you can cross over to a new platform. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work for everybody. That is true. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. It's 9.52. Uh, this is KHEARadio.com. Thank you, everybody, who's taking the time to tune in and share this out. If you are watching on Facebook or listening in your car or on the KHEA Radio app, on the radio, however you're watching, thank you. Um, I'm talking to London about life, yeah. learning life in the how library. we can be our best. Ooh. Life in the library, yes. Is that the reality show, it like, coming be. soon? We should work together and create this. We, I mean, I want to work together with League City as, yeah. as closely as possible because yeah. y'all have a beast communications department. Yeah. Shout out to them, right? Yeah. 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 So just put in some good words and I be like, life in the library, <laughs> a KGA radio, City of League yeah. City collaboration, collaboration, and we can right. make it happen. We're all about collaborating, yeah. Yeah. So um, is there anything else that we haven't touched on that... I'm trying to... There's so many great things. If we didn't touch on anything, I definitely want to urge everybody to check out the Me on the Oaks book. Also check out the uh, League City website, the calendars on the Helen Hall Library website. Which, again, if you want to know that website, you can just Google because, you know, the title of it's kind of long. But you can Google uh, Helen Hall Library, uh, League City, go to the website, check out the calendars and find a program that you're interested in. We have a variety of different things going on. Um, we have a book club that I'm actually a part of. It's called the Great Books Club. We're reading Fahrenheit 451, which they also have a movie on it. And the great thing about that book club is you don't necessarily have to have read the book. <coughs> so what that means is you can just come and come and be a part of the discussion. Um, also, in terms of that, we also have different books being selected every month. So it's something for everybody. It's supposed to be great literary works. Um, we have the scholastic tutoring going on. We have ESL. So if you're trying to learn English or you want to you know, bring a family member, definitely those are all free resources available to you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So that's that's awesome. I think that, that ESL stuff is, is uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. I first learned about that, you know, there's teachers yeah. that, um, you know, they'll specialize in that and they have the training and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But okay, uh, one more thing. This is from Christina. She okay. said she wanted me to tell you that she loves your glasses. Thank you so much. It, is is the black kind of like your thing? It is. You know, it started off as like a little, what is it, like a, 
the look. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and then I like buttons, so I kind of repped the library today with buttons and then also the volunteer work. Because so. you got the black, yeah, on black. the black on black. on black on black. It's like, yeah. tri- not even just like triple black. Yeah. The thing is but like, I put a gray sock black. with it, <laughs> but I feel like black is very timeless. So <laughs> it a is. lot of times when we do any professional appearances, I try to do the black. It's kind of like the stigma. It, it, it is, yeah. yeah. yeah it looks cool. cool. Thank you. I with the glasses and, like and everything, the vibe. Too. We talked about the green, yeah. How he likes green, guys. I like that. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you for hanging out today. Yeah, anytime. London, I appreciate you. And we'll have to bring you back soon where you can come and chat, especially when the library is open. Yes. And we can learn about... Uh all the cool stuff that's happening. I feel like it's all planned out. You got the book yeah, right there, yeah, like for dude, spring. Dude. I'm like, if I forget anything, this handy dandy book will get me through. Beyond the Oaks. Yeah, Beyond the Oaks. Check it out. Cool. This is KHEA Radio, 99.5 FM. All right, Facebook. Y'all be good. Yes. And if you have any questions for London, yes. how can somebody get a hold of you? Okay, so the best way to get a hold of me is going to be email. And my email is London, L O N D O N, dot Lawrence at League City, TX dot gov. Um, and then also my number is going to be found on the library website. I'm not going to put it on here, <laughs> but you definitely can email me and feel free to ask any questions in regards to the library. I'll be more than happy to hook you up with somebody if I don't know the answer. Um, but definitely stay tuned and we hope to see you at the library January 13th. All right. All right, guys. Be-